We're on the air and so grateful to be with you this morning. Sister C.J. Hammonds with Harvest Ministries. Harvest stands for Happy and Redeemed Vessels Enjoying Salvation Together. Grateful for whoever you are being tuned in and part of the broadcast this morning. Thankful for those that's praying for this sister and the ministry for We Need It. Um, it's been a difficult week, but God is faithful and God is ever true and He's in, in uh, just standing with us. That's all I can say. Thankful for those that are supporting us with the means. Help us pay for the airtime and other expenses that come up at times. And we're just very thankful and always mindful that it is not just one person that's doing anything. It's many people that make uh, this ministry and all the ministries. I think everybody could say the same thing that make us all do what we are able to do. So we're thankful. Um, we had some pressing issues today. Uh, but we're grateful that we can come to you still live uh, over the phone. Hope to bless your heart and to encourage you. I'm going to be in the book of Philippians chapter 1 this morning bringing you the word um, and still just desiring to deliver what God's laid on my heart to give to you. If you have your Bibles, Philippians chapter 1. I'm going to read two verses of scripture. Pick up in um, verse 6. And the Bible says, Being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ even as it is meet for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart and as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel ye all are partakers of my grace Paul writing there to the Philippian church and he is trying to give a thanks on behalf of the Philippians for their support to the ministry and he continues to pray for their growth in the knowledge of Christ. And so we want to talk to us about how we are partners of grace today. He mentioned there that he that we were all partakers, he said, of my grace, but he is meaning of the grace that is shared with Jesus Christ that we uh, are given and provided for. For it is the grace that has brought all of us together and uh, it makes us, therefore, partners of grace. Paul is reminding the Philippian church that of the one thing that they were responsible for and to keep in mind that when Jesus starts this good work, amen, we read that he's begun a good work in you, he's able to perform it. Let us keep in mind that Christ not only is able to start it, but he's also able to finish it. The first part of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Looking unto the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is the author and he is the finisher. And we spoke a few weeks back about that particular verse of scripture. But we need to be reminded that the work that he's begun in you, brothers and sisters, he's able to complete that work. Saying again what Jesus has begun, he will finish it. Did he not do what he said he would do for every living soul of this world? We know that he died on the cross for the salvation of the souls. In the book of Ephesians, I want to read of how that he has made us to become the partakers of Christ. Uh, this first part, don't, don't get alarmed, but it, it's the, uh, the after part that I want us to look at. Ephesians chapter 6, or I'm sorry, chapter 5, in verse 25, it starts out, Husbands, love your wives. Now that's a whole nother message in itself. Husbands, love your wives even as, even as Christ also loved the church. But here's the part I want us to look. And gave himself for it. He gave his life for the church. Verse 26 said that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word and that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Wow. So what Jesus has started, he's able to finish. Ephesians tells us that he gave his life for the church. 
He loved the church so much that he gave his life for it to sanctify us, to cleanse us, to wash us with the word. And that he is going to present us back as that bride, a glorious church, without a spot, without a wrinkle, or any such thing, that we should be holy and we should be without a blemish, without any fault. And Jesus gave himself that we could be those part partners of grace. His blood was shed that we could have the opportunity to be part of the bride, as I said earlier, that he is soon to return for. But he's speaking to the church, Paul, there in the last part of verse 6 back in Philippians. And he said to perform unto the day of Jesus Christ. He's able to perform that work in you until he either parts the skies to come and get his children or if it is here that we take our last breath. But he is able to complete the work that he has begun in you through the grace and through the partnership that we have as brothers and sisters in Christ. And that is what we are here for, to help, to encourage, to strengthen, to pray for, to intercede in behalf. Because Christ has done all those things for us, why are we not giving back to our fellow man? Verse 7, it said it's, he's, it's meet for him to think this because he has them in their heart. And not only does Paul have these folks in his heart, he says, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel. Man, I begin to look at that verse 7 and it began to sound to me like a, a testimony of one more time of what God has done, amen, for Brother Paul. This is another aspect of his testimony that he is saying God has brought me through and we should be encouraged if we read it and we begin to break it down and to digest it because this grace is some awesome stuff and that it sometimes is the link that pulls you through the circumstances that you go through. The grace that he tells us it is sufficient in our weakness he is made strong and so think Think about where Paul ended up and where most of our New Testament, it comes from. It comes from a prison cell. But yet his joy, yet his testimony. Oh, I'm sure Paul had those dark days just like any of us that are walking for Jesus. But at the same time, look at where Paul was. He didn't allow the circumstances and the surroundings to change his, his relationship with Jesus. But he said, listen, now he said there in verse 7, you're only in my heart. He said, but you were there in my bonds, both in the bonds and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel. And the testimony, he said, I'm in my bonds. I'm in these, I'm in these shackles. I'm in these stocks. I'm in these chains. Uh, my confinement is physically that I am shackled. But spiritually... He's saying, I am free, for Christ has broke my chains. Amen. And he is encouraging his brothers and sisters. He's broke my chains of sin. He's broke my chains of selfish pleasure, where that it is all about me. Oh, I am spiritually free, even though I may physically be in this prison. I may physically have the chains hanging off of my arms and my legs, and I might not have the freedom, so to speak, to go where I want to go, but spiritually, I am free. But he does remind us that there are chains. There are chains that God does have for those that are wicked and those that uh, are going to be put on them and, and held until uh, judgment comes. Second Peter chapter 2. I am reminded of this scripture often more than not. And the Bible said in verse 4, he said, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Oh, and the next verse starts out, And spared not the old world. I mean, God had uh, made His judgment. We can read in the Old Testament. We can see even in the New Testament uh, the, the judgment of God. But, but He brings here, He said, But they are delivered into the chains of darkness 
to be reserved unto judgment. If God did not spare a, th a third part of the angels that fell with Lucifer, that fell with Satan from heaven when he deceived them, if God did not spare even them, He's not going to spare us. But Paul was declaring, oh, I might have some physical chains, but in my spirit, he has come and he has broke, he has set me free. Oh, and he said there, he said, because he's begun a good work in me. And not only did he begin the good work, but he's able to finish this good work that is in me. But by grace is how we are saved. Amen. That's what the word says. And we've become the partners of grace. Oh, I told you this grace is some awesome stuff now. Oh, just allow it to just change you, mold you, make you who God wants you to be. Oh, you don't have to be resilient to Him. I understand we have to be tough against the world. I understand that we have to resist them and, and stand our ground at those times. Amen. But we don't have to be that way with God. We can submit unto the Lord. Oh, and allow that grace to do its wonderful work. He said, you were there not only in my bonds, the Philippian church, he said, but also there at my defense of the gospel. We know that Paul did not, we read in the scripture, he was a man of God, he stood no matter where he was. But he said there in the defense of the gospel, he says, Christ is the one that is pleading my cause. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for pleading my cause. Thank you, Jesus, for making all the wrongs in my life, making them right. Thank you, God, for the blood that you have shed. Thank you, God, for the grace, because that is what brings me into this partnership. Amen. Oh, that, that you've set this captive free. The Bible tells us, he said, in the defense of the gospel, let me go over to 1 Corinthians. It said for... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. There was His defense of the Gospel according to the Scriptures and how that Christ had died for our sins. And not only so much there, but let me go to Hebrews and read that verse. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Hallelujah. That he might be merciful, might be a merciful and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Listen, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Paul was declaring his testimony. When's the last time you declared your testimony? Come on now. Tell him what God has saved you from. Amen. Thanking God from what he saved you from. Thanking God that he has pleaded on your behalf. Thanking God for the wrongs that have been made right in your life and you're no longer in that pit. You're no longer bound to the chains that he has set you free. The bonds that wanted to try to keep you in this world. Thank God you're no longer in the club. Thank God you're no longer in the liquor bottle. As Brother Billy was talking about, uh, you know, or Buddy, Brother Buddy was talking about, you know, but thank God for His grace, for His mercy that He has extended, amen, that He has made all those wrongs in our life right, and, and we are following God. He's at the right hand of the Father. We hear different ones testify, and He's there interceding for us on our behalf. Therefore, He's allowing us to become those partners of grace. Partners of grace. Just think what grace has done. That's that's where the, the thought was just deeping into my, my soul as I was going through different things this week. Oh, the grace, the grace, the grace. I don't handle it like I used to. Oh, I'm getting weary. I need some grace, God. Oh, just the different things in different places that, that this sister had walked in. But, oh, don't you know that the grace will carry you through. And here I am today trying to encourage us, amen, to know that we can be partners in grace. You're not the only one that is going through the battle. Amen. I'm not the only one that's going through the battle. Hallelujah. But together and with Christ's help, we can go through this together. He said, not only was you a defense in the gospel, he said, but you had a confirmation. A confirmation of this gospel as well. And that confirmation is that Jesus Christ has overcome. Amen. And that gives us all the more the opportunity to an eternal life with God in heaven. Because Jesus Christ, yes, He died on the cross for our sins. But I tell you where our victory came is when He rose from the grave. Hallelujah. Oh, He, he nailed those sins to His cross. He took them on His. He bore the sins of this world. But can I tell us today, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank God he rose from the grave because that is what gives us the victory today, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And that gives us the opportunity that we can have, hallelujah, the eternal life with God in heaven. Jesus said it like this. Let me go find my text. He said in John's Gospel 16 and verse 33 he said these things I have spoken this is Jesus saying I've spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation he said but be of good cheer I have overcome the world he has overcome the world he has overcome death and the grave and the sting that it once held and the victory that it once held over God's people but Jesus has overcame that that is the confirmation of the gospel. Not only by the witnesses and the testimonies that had seen it and the documentation, but the lives that have been changed when grace was poured into their lives. He overcame to give us the gift of God. We know what is the gift of God. Eternal life. Amen. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We know that the wages of sin is death. Man, I don't I don't even want to, you know, yeah, that, that's good to know when, when I'm in sin, but I want to keep reminded that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Confirmation of the gospel. Let's just, you know, we can all be summed up at this passage of Scripture right here. Partners of grace. Partners of grace can be summed up here and this uh, Scripture in Colossians that is being uh, inscribed and spoke to us in Colossians 2. Looking at those scriptures, I thought, God, you know, you tell us time and time again. We just don't ever seem to put two and two together. My friend, if your salvation never gets, you know, dull or loses its, you know, uh, power, I'll just say the power, the sensitivity of, of the day when you were resurrected, amen, from sin. Forgiven. If that's losing it, see, I mean, we need to pray because that is the foundation of everything that God begins to bless us with. I've said it time again, sure, it was wonderful blessings, seeking the blessings of God and the gifts of the Spirit, but there is no day like the day when God saved this girl <laughs> from her sins. Woo! And I tell you what, if you can't go back to that time and it begin to stir something in your soul, you're getting too far from Jesus. You're getting too far from the Master. You're getting too far from the cross. Glory to God. And I pray that you will just get, get that way back. He's there. He's awaiting just to draw you in. And I'm praying that the words are touching your heart to encourage you. But Galatians tells us in chapter 2 and in verse 12, the Bible said, Buried with Him in baptism. That's why we have the baptism. We, we call it that liquid grave. And then he said, Buried with him in the baptism wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith. Hallelujah of the operation of God. Hallelujah. That is where we get the baptism, the liquid grave. And when we go out to the water, we are in that baptism because we go down one creature but come up a new creature. We go down in the old life and come up in a new life. Even though we, we should be saved, amen, uh, we need to be saved before we go down in the water because we're just going to come up a wet, a wet wet thing <laughs> instead of a new creature in Christ. I hope you understand what I'm saying. We've got to have that salvation experience. Amen. You, if you go down, they say, as a as a sinner, you come up a wet sinner. Uh, so baptism does not save us. The blood of Jesus saves us, folks. But when you are saved, you want to take that step of baptism. And I hope that it's offered at your church. Amen. But we go into the liquid grave and we go down one creature. Amen. In Christ. But we're raised that new creature in Christ as well. Praise the Lord. And we are risen anew and we will rise with him again forever. And let's see, who hath raised him from the dead is what the Bible said. We are raised again with him. Verse 13, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Like I said earlier, all of this in these in these couple of scriptures can really be summed up. Praise the Lord. The, the confirmation of the gospel. Not only do we have the baptism in the liquid grave, knowing that we are going to rise again with Him, but He said you've been made alive by forgiving your trespasses against God and man. 
We've been quickened together. We've been made alive having forgiven us. Forgiving us all of our trespasses that we have committed against God and against man. Verse 14, it said, Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us. Woo! That is freedom. That is is deliverance. Amen. He has settled it by, let's look at the rest of that verse. It said, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. <laughs> he blotted it out. Oh, all the things that we had ever done. The record that was being recorded of our sins. Oh, he said those that were contrary to us, but Jesus took it of the way and nailed it to his cross. Wow. Thank God for grace. Thank God. Oh, you might not have been, uh, you know, a deep sinner. You might not have had, you know, a whole list of things. But the point was, is you were a sinner. And you needed that grace. You needed that salvation to come and rescue you right where you are. And you know what Jesus did? He blotted out all those things that you committed, that you did, the lies that you told, the things that, you know, you might not have drank, you might not have took drugs, you might not have fornicated, you might not have murdered, you might not have lied. You might. You know, but the point was, is you've done some things that you needed to be forgiven of. Hallelujah. So many times we think, I, I didn't do all those. You know, what did Jesus, you know, yeah, he saved me, but I don't have a testimony to know that your life has been changed by the grace of God. Somebody needs to know because there's somebody just like you sitting out there, listening out there that needs to know that somebody else has been in the same shoes somewhere. And that's where we have the testimony. Testimony hour. Great time to share that. Verse 15. And having spoiled the principalities and the powers. Whew, he had made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Whew, he defeated the powers that be. Openly showing you can't hold Jesus. Hallelujah. That is the God that we serve today, folks. The one that the enemy thought for sure. Oh, that he had him. Hallelujah. Thought that Jesus had died. But Jesus overcame. He came and he openly showed those powers that thought that, oh, he's gone. He wasn't what he said he was. But Jesus came and he walked this earth and he shooed himself to many witnesses, amen, that has been recorded, glory to God, all the more showing and defeating the enemy, that devil. He has triumphed and he has gave us the victory that we need to be those partakers of grace, partakers of his grace. Hallelujah. Let us be reminded that Romans 6 and 14, it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but you're under grace. It doesn't have the rule. It doesn't have the bond. It doesn't have the shackles that, that sin used to have because you're coming under Jesus' grace. Looking at our time, it's kind of a little, little strange being here in, in the apartment and I have people on both sides of me, but we're just hoping that that God will just help us in the, in the time that we have left. Really just try to focus in on the souls. On the folks that are out there that need to know of this grace. That need to be reminded of this grace. Can I say is His grace reaching out to you wherever you are. And you're listening to this program. Is His grace reaching out to you. Is it reaching out to you and offering you salvation? Oh, I pray you will say, Lord, here I am. Save me. Save me from my sins, God. Allow me to experience that grace that this sister's talking about. To feel that freedom and that deliverance. Even though physically I may be shackled. Even though physically I may be chained. <laughs> but He can set you free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is He reaching out to offer you some forgiveness? 
Oh, is he, have you been in a place this week that maybe you, you didn't act very Christ-like? Maybe you didn't make all the right decisions that you should have made. Glory to God. But is he reaching out that grace for forgiveness unto you? Even if we're Christians, we are not perfect. And there are plenty of times in my walk, I say this, that I've had to repent and ask God. That was not Christ-like at all. Is he reaching out that grace for forgiveness, showing you you need to be forgiven and that he's willing to forgive you. Hallelujah. To allow that fire in your life to come alive. Hallelujah. And to share your testimony once again with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because somebody out there needs to know this way is not. I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. Christ is perfect. Hallelujah. And when you see my faults, when you see my shortcomings, pray for me. Know that I strive to make it. Know that he is my all in all. Glory to God. But there's things sometimes and he's reaching out that grace that we need forgiveness for. We've not thought something right. We've not said something right. We've not acted right. And God's grace is being extended unto us because we are partners, my friend. We are partners of this grace. Hallelujah. And what kind of partner is just going to let you just go any old kind of way? What kind of partner is not going to try to be there to encourage you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is he reaching out to offer you healing? Offer you healing physically? Offer you healing spiritually? Offering you healing mentally and emotionally? You know, he, he's, he's an all around. He's reaching out that grace to give you the healing that he wants to bring into your life. Being a partner of grace. Why don't you be a partner of grace with me as I am in the grace with Jesus. There was a portion of scripture Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. A lot of people won't say that. You know, they won't be under the scrutiny. They don't want to be, hey, I want to make heaven my home and if anybody's willing, let's go together. Glory to God. Because we are partners in this together. Know that there is that wonderful grace that has been extended unto you today. That you can just reach out and say, God, I'm trusting you for it. I love you, God. And I thank you for the peace that you've given me in this walk. As we got just a few minutes and wrapping it up and knowing that, you know, the, the song, Grace, Marvelous Grace. It said, I needed grace to pardon and make me whole. That grace, marvelous grace, where is it? it flows from above with an infinite love. Marvelous grace. God doesn't withhold it from us. He loves us so much. There's that we cannot exhaust God's resources that He has for each of us, no matter how bad, no matter how rebellious, no matter how disobedient we may get. We can't exhaust His resources. But then there is a grace. God's grace. A grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace. Grace. God's grace. That is greater than all our sins. Think about that grace today as you're walking. Think about that grace today that God has placed in your life. Treasure this gift and treasure one another that is along this way, knowing we are partners of grace together. You're not alone. You're not the only one. But sometimes we just need to reach out to folks and ask them to help us at times. Maybe you're guilty of that. But know that God loves you and that we're partners of grace and that all of us get to points in our lives that we need to reach up.